How you doing tonight, Joe? What's been going on? I am not much. Just doing my day to day activities, keeping an eye on my dog, standard stuff. Yeah, how's Koa doing? Oh, uh, Koa's doing great. Joe Scout K9 is a friend of mine who I've known for about two years now. Joe is the proud owner of a YouTube channel with over 1,400 subscribers, and he was the first person I thought of when this project came up. Uh. So, now that all the formalities that will be in the uh, actual video, but not this project, um, let's get right down to it. Joe, I have a question for you. Shoot. At this point, I asked Joe about a show we both used to watch, My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. I asked him how he became what is commonly referred to as a brony. <laughs> how much time we got? <laughs> we got, um, to let you get bored. Uh, well, I knew what a brony was for a while, long after the show was, like, going on air i already knew what one was but i always was like no no like i was a, i was a sophomore in high school i was this everyone knew i wanted to be a u.s marine so everyone so i had this i'm a big tough guy tough guys don't don't watch little little horses but i did watch a certain individual on youtube called the inverted shadow he made gmod videos at the time and i was a huge fan I remember the day that I first got introduced to the Brony, like truly introduced to the Brony fan. I came home, I forget what day it was, but I remember sophomore year, came home, I was just super exhausted. I don't know, I don't remember what exactly happened, but it was just such a draining day. I just came home, I saw he uploaded a video, and I was like, my day's suddenly getting a lot better. So I watched that video. And sure, and at the very end of it, appeared a character, a pony version of the inverted shadow. At yeah. which case, I, I, I lost it. Lost it? What do you mean by lost it? Oh no, not him too! I knew what a brony was, I was just, no, not him! I, everyone around me that I was watching was either becoming a brony or was talking about it. So I knew very little people in the actual community before like, um, were actually joining. But I didn't <laughs> join the fandom until much later. I was still a sophomore, but like a few months later. Wait, what year was that, by the way? What year were you a sophomore? Oh, uh, God almighty, what year? Officially, I am officially I am class of 2016, so I was a sophomore around 20. 13, 2014, somewhere around that time. Sounds about right. So, um, so a few months later after that, I started, I, like, I still watched the Inverted Shadow because I'm like, you know what? He can do whatever the hell he wants to. I'm just going to ignore his pony stuff. But over time, more and more people that I watched at the time, some of them are even gone now, um, they were, they were all becoming bronies and talking about it. And then I saw. A PMV, my very first PMV, my pony, my very first pony music video, and um, it was a, it was a cover, it was a rendition of some of Rainbow Dash's scenes that were, like, uh, dubbed over to one of my favorite songs, which was, um, "You're Gonna Go Far, Kid." Oh, I know the one you're talking about. Yeah, you know the one. I'm yeah, talking they, about. they sped and, they sped it up so that it would match more like Rainbow Dash's style. Yeah, exactly, and. Uh, I saw the episode Sonic Rain. I, I saw like clips from the episode Sonic Rain. I'm like, so what? I just was watching this and I was just like, what the hell? I thought these whole ho these whore ponies were supposed to be girly and and and, and sis and sissy and just ugh, just Barbie ish. But I'm like, but this is awesome. Okay, I need to look up this episode. What episode was this? Okay, Sonic, Sonic Rain Boom was season one, episode sixteen. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I watched that episode. And then after realizing how awesome it was, I said, okay, I need context. I need to figure out who these horses are. So all of season one later. Oh my. Yeah, I was hooked. I was hooked. But I was very, very nervous about being a brony. Because I'm like, oh my God, I can't let anybody know this because I'm, I'm planning to join the Marines and they all, and they're all this, these, 
And I'm like, ah! I remember that moment too. Yeah, but when I finally like, fully like said, like, you know what? I'm happy with my own skins. I discovered Josh Scorcher, the fiery joker. He was already in the U.S. Marine Corps. And he was a brony, and not only that, he was a YouTuber brony. So, seeing that, I said, I'm comfortable in my own skin. And then I remembered I had a YouTube channel of my own, and, well, the rest is history. That's a really cool story. Joe, thank yeah. you for sharing that. It's a pleasure. With Joe's story now complete, I went on to talk to Joe about random subjects such as his YouTube channel. I already know the answer to this, but I'm asking for audience context. What do you, what you said, you mentioned you had a YouTube channel before. What was that YouTube channel about? Uh, I originally started out a long time ago. Um, my first video was ever just filming dogs at my local dog park, which was fun. It wasn't really successful. I tried, Excuse me. I tried two unsuccessful videos. One was a one was a reaction to a video I don't even remember anymore. And the second one was a review of Far Cry Three, which was stu- completely stupid, uh, cringeworthy. So, but that was so my YouTube video was basically non-existent. I didn't even know what the hell I wanted to do with it anymore. So I just abandoned it until I became a brony and everything became re- about reactions which was a whole lot of fun my first reaction was the sm- was the smile hd Ooh. oh man yeah talk about jumping <laughs> that's not that i was i didn't jump into the deep end of the pool i jumped into the shark infested ocean you jumped out of the you jumped out of the non-existent fire and into the uh well even worse fire that's not how the saying goes it's the pan and the fire <laughs> exactly you jumped yeah, out of the pan of safety and into the fire known as the Brony fandom. <laughs> well, the dark side. Well, the really like, I like I'm a sick guy. I'm I'm messed up in the head, and I'm gonna animate a video. I have all this talent. I'm gonna animate horses beating the crap out of each other. <laughs> yeah, but still, it's awesome. It was awesome. It was so much fun, and I still it still brings me a lot of joy just because just looking at how like. The biggest thing that always like drives me nuts is how like cur- my, curly my hair was, how skinny I was, and the fact that I had glasses at the time. Yeah, do you wear contacts now? No, I had eye surgery. Oh, LASIK? No, I had. Uh, since I was planning to go into the Marine Corps, I never, I never did. Um, I had, I went through a pr- procedure car- called PRK, where they basically take a lens, a laser, and they mold the cornea into a lens on your eye sounds painful so they basically oh yeah all they gave me was one pill of valium and they couldn't and and that was it i was actually clutching a challenge coin in my hand while they were doing the procedure because i was awake the whole time and by the end of it you could actually uh, you could actually see it imprinted into my hands oh man it hurt and the next day was not so pleasant walking around the house just bashing into things no, it wasn't the blindness. It was just the headaches, the headaches, the nausea. Oh God, it was. I won't go into detail because I don't want too many people to lose their lunch. Yeah. So, you went from what was that? Eight years ago. Yeah, the bit. No, not eight years ago. You um, twenty thirteen, twenty fourteen Se- would have been seven or six years ago. Seven or six years ago. Seven or six years ago, you went from skinny kid with curly hair glasses and, and glasses n- to no glasses um a little less hair i'm tr- I'm trying to put that nicely i <laughs> know don't worry nate and and you've you're in yeah you're saying and that's that's pretty much the whole baloney i'm here and the brony fandom's been a lot to me like like it actually came into me at really the best time because high school for me was not good. I didn't have that good of a high school experience. I mean, the teachers were great, and I had a few friends, but um, for the yeah, most part, the I, yeah, I was, I was the kid that no one ever wanted to hang with. And I think in 
some of them just didn't know I existed, which I don't have in mind. There were some people that did it for horrible reasons. Uh, there were just, and then there were just kids that just plain up hated me. But whatever. I had, I had the few friends I had. I had the ML, the MLP community has, has really come through for me for some, like literally. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this bluntly. The MLP Brony fandom, it's, it has saved my life. Many, many times. I realize that that's kind of a stereotypical one to say, but it is true for quite a number of people. That is true. For me, I'm, I'm just one case because you're interviewing me. I know there's like dozens, hundreds maybe, of other people that have gone through extremely hard times and the Brony fandom has always come through to basically help each other out, which is flipping amazing. Yeah, friendship is magic. Embrace the magic. Unleash the magic. One of us. One of us. One, one of, of us. us. We accept you. One of us. <laughs> yeah. Uh. <laughs> but yeah, this phantom's in the best. And the yeah. cons. Oh my god. You know more than anything that... Uh, yeah, the, the cons, cons are like the one place where people can be the people that they aren't really in the public eye. Because nobody really cares about the cons. You can uh, not yeah, necessarily no one... do what you want, but you can do things that you... When do at your nine to five job there, you feel like you can cut loose a little bit. That's the that's a better word for what I was trying to say. Thank you. Yeah, cons have always been fun for me. Here's a question for you. Um, what is your favorite con memory that you have? My favorite. Ooh. You know, I'll I'll make it easy. At at the last con that you went to. The last con that would be. Brony con, the last Brony con. Oh yeah, you went to the last Brony con. I forgot about that. Yes, I was. My favorite memory of the last Brony con, honestly, is just seeing how many people this show brought together. Sort of like a look at the fireworks moment. Exactly. There were there were eleven thousand of us. Eleven thousand. Imagine that. 11,000 people with the same idea as me. Wow. It is just, it is, and it's more of like there are 11,000 people out there that I can talk to and actively have fun with. And the, and the best part is I vlog the whole thing. And just seeing everyone again, meeting other friends like Dynam, like a buddy of mine named Dynamo Pad, really great guy. Um, there was um, the C <laughs> the military, bro. I never met, like I said, I never made it into the military, but I do have, but a lot of my friends are in the military bronies uh, group. Uh, Semper Philly, I believe. Yeah. Semper yeah, that, that sounds right. And those guys are the flipping best. I mean, like, um, the crazy thing is we do sea shanties, and I'll explain that later. Right now I'll focus on, like, the last brony con. Um, like, and then there's, like, um, <laughs> one of my one of the best memories, like, one of the craziest ones was um, to Will Sinator and his wife Katie. I actually, like, I've started to become friends with them in a certain case, and um, when I was there, like, I think it was the very day zero, we're just hanging around, and all of a sudden I hear, Joe! And all of a sudden I turn, and here comes Katie, running at me full speed, gives me a hug, and Will's right behind her. I'm like, oh my god, I barely know these people, they're my idols, and they're treating me like I'm their best friend. That's the magic of this community. Exactly, and then there's just there's, of course, the TF2 analysis anarchy panels, which were fun, which is hosted by all all my big guys, including Will, Josh, and so many others. Um, just the con the activities and just the vendor hall is always a blast. Just just meeting people and just breaking down barriers is always the best part. That's just the best thing about it. And even even at the end, when we when when I was with the Semper Philly guys, we were actually singing sea shanties. We were singing sea shanties that a lot of us were just coming up with off the top of our head. We were ponifying sea shanties. Oh yeah, and like, like there the was one we, guy. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Ask the like the ones that we used to do during uh, the CF Thieves streams that we used to do. Kind of like that. Yeah. Exactly yeah. like that. Yeah. But um. There was one guy. I think it was a guy from. It was a guy from Wales, I believe. So yeah, guy flew from 
Wales in the UK all the way to Baltimore to attend the last Brony Gun. How's that for commitment and what this fandom's done? So this guy, um, so we're doing um, Roll the Old Chariot Along, and the line that he brought up was, another Brony Gun wouldn't do us any harm. <laughs> to which I'm pretty sure everybody was like, oh, yes, please. But yeah. just sitting there at the end with all the guys, even during the final closing ceremonies when all of us had tears in our eyes, it was just... It mm -hmm. was sad to lose it, of course, but... I mean, I'm, hey, I, thanks for the memories. Exactly, and plus I feel like it was like... Um, the real reason they were shutting down is because, yeah, there were 11,000 of us, but... Not all of us are big con goers. We can't go all the time like some of the other guys. So, they, so less and less people show up, which is fine. So there, I, I feel more or less that BronyCon will eventually return, hopefully, but just in a more downsized, more easily manageable package, which is still just fine. I prefer the smaller cons. Yeah, one, one thing that I'd like to bring up is with the recent ongoing events of COVID-19, we had a huge influx of what we're calling online conventions. Uh, Joe, do you have any thoughts on the online conventions? They're okay if properly managed and just more or less organized. I think like, I, I think I don't have enough like, like um, experience with them to give them a full judgment just due to based on the fact that this is the first year we've done it because, well, we kind of had to like put this together with bailing wire and duct tape because all, everything's all shut down. So yeah, that's, I can't, I, I really can't give them a full like yay or nay. Yeah. I mean, if I can somehow be a con chair, you know that something's wrong. <laughs> you did. Okay, dude. You just, just was, didn't fit you You didn't fit the position very well. Yeah. I tried. Besides that, Joe, I want to thank you for, doing this with me it's my pleasure um at this point i'll probably cut the video but uh thank you so much for listening uh f feel free to tune into the channel or whatever this is being posted on so go sports team <laughs> go them appaloosa how about, Apple them dolphins? how about them but how about them colts <laughs> Thank you, Jedi. Uh -huh.